All right, start off, ma'am. Sorry for the uh, late submission. Uh, we just got out of a field training exercise, so I didn't have access to a uh, computer or anything. Um, no excuse, but just wanted to apologize. Uh, class, today we'll be going over ground guide procedures. Uh, we're gonna keep it very basic because no matter where you go, in the civilian world, military world, um, anywhere pretty much, you're gonna have different basic hand and arm signals. So today I'm just gonna go over the basic rules for ground guiding procedures in general. Next. All right, so some of the training objectives we're gonna go over, we're actually gonna go over on only one of these. It's the uh, safety guidelines and regulation for ground guiding. Next. All right, so ground guide safety procedures. Ground guides must be trained in uh, standard hand and arm signals. Like I said, we're not gonna go over too many of those because everywhere you go, you're gonna have different hand and arm signals. Some people like things uh, one way, some people like things the other way. So it's gonna change. Uh, hand and arm signals are the basic method used for ground guiding. If you've ever had to back somebody in with a boat trailer or just back somebody in in like tight spaces at a concert, anything like that, you've probably used hand and arm signals that you and your friend came up with on the fly. Uh, voice signals, uh, you should avoid using these. Uh, unless it's a dire emergency, like you know, someone's about to hit someone else, someone's about to hit some equipment, uh, so you'd be like, stop, stop, stop! You'd do something like that to catch their attention because maybe they were like trying to do it themselves and they didn't realize what was going on. Uh, only one ground guy gives the signals to the driver. If you have you and a group, a bunch of friends, of course you have one driver, so make sure whoever's gonna get those hand and arm signals the driver knows that, that way they're only looking at them. Because if you have two to three people and everyone's saying to do something different because everyone likes to drive and back up or you know drive just differently, then it could get really confusing and could lead to serious injury, damage of equipment, anything like that. Uh, if the sight between you and your ground guide is lost and you're the driver, uh, automatically stop because if you can't see them, uh, there's no telling where they went. Uh, they could be in your blind spot and you could actually back into them or anything if they've, uh, you know, lost their bearing of where they are, stuff like that. Next. Uh, ground guides should keep 10 yards between themselves and the vehicle, front, rear, and flanks. Uh, if you're ground guiding someone, my rule of thumb is be far away from the vehicle. Don't put yourself in between the vehicle and something else where you could get crushed, run over, anything like that and once again talk to your person whoever you're ground guiding to ensure that they know hey if you lose sight of me stop and then i will know hey they stopped so let me make sure i can see them that way uh, they start backing up again uh, so depending on where you are once again civilian world uh, you may not have to have a ground guide but uh, most military branches you do have to have a ground guide uh, when vehicles are being backed up. However, the number of ground guides is determined by restrictions. So if it's dark, you're only gonna wanna have one person out there because maybe you only have one flashlight and reflect the best, stuff like that. So the driver won't be able to see everyone. So you don't wanna put people in uh, harm's way if you don't have to. Uh, the horn will be sound before backing any operation is done. Uh, this goes for civilian world, military world, wherever you are, if you're backing up a vehicle or even if you're just moving a vehicle, um, you don't know, maybe somebody was like leaning on it, maybe someone fell asleep on the tire, stuff like that, like they had their head resting on it. So you just wanna make sure to sound your horn just to let people know, hey, like I'm about to back up, especially if it is dark and you don't have good visibility. So some of the basic uh, rules to stop backing accidents, uh, get the whole picture. So you're gonna wanna walk around the vehicle. You're gonna wanna make sure there's nothing that could, you know, hey, there's nails sticking out of the ground or glass or anything that you could run over that would uh, damage the vehicle yourself, cause an injury, anything like that. Um, you're gonna wanna back from the driver's side. So. You, uh, whoever's ground guiding is always going to want to be on the driver's side. That way they have the best visibility because if you get on the passenger side, you could get in their blind spot and that could lead to serious, death or, or serious injury or death. Uh, so you're going to want to check both sides as you back. So as the ground guide, it's a little bit tedious, uh, especially when it is dark and with backing. You're going to want to, hey, stop, run around, check, 
all right, go back, okay, okay, you got it. Especially if you're trying to fit something in a tight spot, you're gonna wanna be, rather be safe than sorry than you know, scratching someone's vehicle or hitting someone and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, the biggest, number five, use a reliable guide. Um, don't use your three-year-old or four-year-old to back up a boat trailer. Try to get your friend or try to get someone that you know has experience driving. Uh, you don't want just any Joe Schmo out there ground guiding you. So those are some of the biggest things with ground guide. Those are the basic rules. Um, and this concludes my period of instruction.